to night four of our fall 2021 pledge drive. I'm so glad that each one of you have made it here. This year, our theme is in a gentle way you can shake the world. It's a quote by Mahatma Gandhi, who he himself was a proponent of homeopathy. I wanna take a quick minute to thank each one of our sponsors this week. They are the Academy of Homeopathy Education, paulabrown.com, the Homeopathy Help Network, Yoni Bliss, the Home Foundation, and the Miranda Castro Shop. We are grateful for the support of each one of those groups and companies. So uh, Paula, if you're ready, I'll let you take it. Okay, yes, I am ready. Thank you so much, Michelle, for um, doing that for us, kicking us off. You've been so awesome this week. And um, this is a pledge drive, and we are so excited to be here. Um, at all of our pledge drives, we uh, invite some amazing speakers to be with us. And um, today we're going to be speaking to Samantha Convoy. But just before I, I introduce you to her and before I tell you a little bit about her, I want you guys to know that... Um, you can watch all of the previous, uh, previous, um, and it's in our feed on our Facebook page at um, the you know Americans for Homeopathy Choice Facebook page, and um, also on our YouTube channel. So you on Monday we had Dr. Fisher speak with. We actually had some internet trouble, and he was such an awesome sport. And um, and then Tuesday we had, and actually he covered a lot of really fascinating stuff about dental homeopathy. So if you do not know about that, you should definitely um, do that. And um, we had Kelly Callahan. She gave a really awesome intro to homeopathy class. Actually, it was a really fresh perspective. It wasn't so much exactly how to use it. It was more about the philosophy and kind of that foundational stuff that I think sometimes we gloss over. Um, also, we have... Um, Sue Meyer yesterday, she talked a lot about hormones and menopause and homeopathy and had some really great tips. She even incorporated a little bit of herbs and detoxing with that, which I thought was really great, which is not homeopathy if you're new, but um, really great and supports homeopathy really well. So today we're going to have Samantha Convoy speak. Samantha is our board certified classical homeopath. She has been successfully providing homeopathic consultations um, to a myriad of client, clients since 2009. She loves to educate people about homeopathy, presents workshops through San Diego and hosts webinars nationally on various health related topics. She provides remote consultations and is passionate about helping you resolve pain, optimizing your health so you can live life to its fullest. She was also the president of the Council of Homeopathic Certification, which envisions a healthcare system that encompasses certified classical homeopathic practitioners accessible to all. And um, she served as the outreach coordinator for Trinity Health Hub. Um, if you guys haven't heard of that, you should look into it. It's great um, continuing education for homeopaths. And um, she's worked with a lot of homeopaths in the community. And she is now involved with the National Center for Homeopathy as an education consultant. And before I bring Samantha on, this is a pledge drive. Guys, thank you so much for all of your donations. We were able to match our initial 15,000 with um, that $15,000 donation. And so we are now at 40,000 guys. And I have to say, let's keep going. Let's get to 45,000 because we could use the money so much to help pay for guys. It is not cheap. All of the software that we're using now, all of these other different programs that we're using to optimize, they add up plus our legal fees. And we're just having to support and pay um, volunteers that have been, some of them have been with us for almost four years and we have to start supporting them and making this more sustainable. It's just, I mean, the fact that they volunteered up until now, sometimes 40 or 60 hours a week is really a true testament of how much they love homeopathy. We have to start making this like a really properly run organization. And so um, all of your donations help so much to make, um, make this possible. And what I love about our organization is that everybody is so passionate about homeopathy. Anyone that spends 10 minutes helping our organization, it goes so much farther than just like some, you know, random management company or whatever. So we just are so, so thankful for these donations and that they're coming at a time that, you know, we need to grow and progress as we're doing a lot of good work. And a lot of you guys know that we just last month had worked with Congress very carefully and closely, and we got them to send FDA a letter. There was 25 signers on this letter to the FDA guys. Um, it was beautifully bipartisan, bicameral, so both the House and the Senate were represented, um, and that took a ton of work and a ton of organization. Um, and also 
just so you guys know, I hope that you guys are joining us for homeopathy action team webinar coming up um, October 5th. And um, it's just a little information session for you guys to learn about what is the hat team all about? Why should I join? Why should I consider joining homeopathychoice.org forward slash hat? But I'm going to talk about all these things a little bit later about the donations and everything a little bit later. Let's jump into this interview with Samantha. Um, Samantha, today we're talking about finding a highly qualified homeopath. Go ahead and turn on your camera and join us here. Um, I have to say when I started the homeopathy world, Samantha, I had like no idea what all those acronyms meant. And I'm even like a little dyslexic. So I see those letters and I just, I'm kind of like, whatever they have something, right. but they mean something. And I think it's so important for consumers to know what those letters mean. Um, I'm a person that doesn't like big government. I like tiny, small government. And for what I've learned advocating for homeopathy choice, Samantha, is if we're a well-run profession, if we self-regulate very well, it significantly decreases the chances for government to get involved. So let's talk about this. What do you want to tell us? <laughs> oh, well, first off, I just want to thank you for um, inviting me to be a part of this event and to congratulate you on your Pledge, reaching your pledge goals and more and mm -hmm. um, and just also for all the hard work you and everybody at Americans for Homeopathy Choice put in. I know it's probably tireless and, you know, sometimes, um, yeah, just not maybe, you know, everyone thinks to thank you all the time, but I just really appreciate, you know, all the efforts you guys do because I think it makes a big difference in just educating uh, the consumer, especially. So, thank but you. yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a pretty, you're a pretty busy energizer bunny. Like I feel like you've been in just about every organization so far that Americans for homeopathy choice works with. So you're yeah. Yeah. We've seen it. We bumped into each other at a few meetings, right? Yeah, I know. I know. Well, we're a small, it's a small profession. And so it's great to be able to help out, you know, how we can. And, um, and I, and I, uh, echo your sentiment on those volunteers, you know, a lot of people give a lot of free hours, uh, because they love homeopathy so much, but it is really nice if we can, you know, step up and make this more, you know, of a professional uh, thing. Sustainable. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. definitely. Exactly. But yeah, the alphabet soup of homeopathy yes. world. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I feel the same way. And I remember when I was in school and I would see different websites and there was actually glossaries. I felt like people had glossaries on their websites to define, you know, the different letters and um, I thought, wow, okay, this is as if homeopathy isn't complicated enough sometimes. Now we have right. a whole, uh, reference uh, page, but it's really, it was really fun to uh, researching all these different organizations because essentially we all are doing the same thing. Uh, we may uh, cater to a different, um, you know, crowd, like there's doctors who are, um, have the homeopathic uh, designation. There's naturopaths who have that, that designation as well. And then there's professional homeopaths. Um, but in looking at everybody's uh, websites and, and the information, you know, it's all pretty, it's all very similar. And, um, and I think at the end of the day, we all are, you know, just loving homeopathy and wanting to help any, as many people as we can. And so some, I'll just briefly, I know like when I'm, I wanted to keep this casual, not have a full on PowerPoint of all the. Oh, uh, great. No, that's alphabet. how we like to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, one of the organizations, um, the DHT, which used to be the ABHT, uh, is, is the is the doctors, so the medical doctors, osteopaths, um, who have a homeopathic designation, um, and they've all done, you know, each of these have kind of different levels of schooling and certification, but that's when you see a capital D, capital H, little T, that's going to be uh, the medical doctor or osteopath who's gone through, who has um, a, a certification in homeopathy. Uh, the second group is the DHANP, and that's going to designate a, a naturopath doctor who's gone on and gotten a diplomat in homeopathy. So naturopaths in general, some of them learn a little bit of homeopathy, but with the DHANP, they're definitely more specialized and have a lot more training in homeopathy than perhaps just a, um, a, a regular ND or, or naturopath. Um, the other... Um, designation. So you may have seen the capital RSH and then little OHM, the RS home, and then NA. So that's going to be the registered um, not, um, homeopath. And that's also associated with NASH. People may be more familiar with NASH, uh, the North American Society of Homeopaths. And um, 
and they again have different criteria to be become registered through them. Uh, one thing I saw about Nash that I thought was really interesting and a little different than some of the other organizations, they have like student uh, memberships available, associate memberships. So you know, kind of wherever you are on your path in homeopathy, if you want to mm-hmm. um, get more involved, you're able to do that. Um, and I think I sent some directory links, so at some point those can go out because um, each of these organizations have their own, you know, directory and links to, to their members. Um, and then the last one and the one I'm most familiar with is the um, CHC, so the Certified Classical Homeopath. And um, that's been around since about 1991. Um, and we've certified a, about a, over a thousand homeopaths since that time and currently have about 600 homeopaths um, in good standing. So, um, but again, you know, it's very, it, you know, we're all a little different, but very similar in, you know, in, in the training and different things. Well, what I think is really interesting about each of these, um, each of these groups is, you know, like depending on what state, so, so when we talk about the drugs, which is homeopathic medicine is technically legally speaking a drug per the food, drug and cosmetic act. That's something that gets regulated at a federal level. What about the practice of medicine or the practice of homeopathy? Where is that? Where's the juris? Do you, do you know which, where it falls under in the jurisdiction? Um, I know it's uh, no, I believe it's uh, state by state. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. So depending on what state you live in, um, your state might, there are some states that have actually control the word homeopath. Yeah. Um, I know like, for example, Arizona is one of them. You have to meet a certain criteria if you're going to call yourself a homeopath. And some states do not require um, any kind of minimum level um, training or whatever to call yourself a homeopath. And I, w- I will tell you one time I was talking to someone and she called herself a homeopath. And I was like, well, and I, after I talked to her and tried understanding her training, Samantha, she pretty much done like a weekend course here and there, and she was not properly trained. And, and she even said to me, well, the state, you know, that we live in doesn't have any requirements. So we can use that word. And that kind of hit a nerve with me because Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, there's a lot of trust when you work with a practitioner and, and, you know, just because there's a loophole or whatever, you know, I was like, okay, we need as consumers to make sure we know who we're talking to and we know you know, what it, what it took for that person to be a homeopath. So can you talk a little bit about like, what are the, you know, like, what are the requirements for some of these, um, for you to get some of these acronyms? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, the one I'm most familiar with, um, is like I said, the CCH and that's Mm -hmm. an a thousand, a thousand hour program. So 500 clinical 500 classroom and, um, and, and in that clinical is 10, at least 10 cases with a supervisor. So, which is such an important thing to be able to take a case and to get help with it. I mean, I'll talk about that a little bit later too, if there's time about just, you still always wanna be getting help with cases if they get hard, when they get hard. Um, right. And so, um, and, then, and then there's a, an, an, an exam that, that people take to pass it. But the, the real piece of it and, and the other organizations as well. I know with the doctors, I think it's a 350. Obviously they've all been through medical school. So they've got right. all of that background. And so their, their requirements are a little bit different, but it's all um, case submission or oral interview. Um, and I know the DHA and P it's, it seems very extensive. It seems like a whole year process from what I could gather um, of just submitting cases and then, you know, getting interviewed by your peers and then having recommendations as well. Um, I know Nash, you need to um, submit um, cases because really the idea behind it is like, like you mentioned, like someone that you need at a Whole Foods or Sprouts, it's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a homeopath. And the idea behind it is to really, you know, can, do you know how to take a case and, and not only find the right remedy, but are you aware of any sort of health conditions that, you know, giving a high potency or, that this person may have that may need other help besides homeopathy. So I think that's, that's a big piece of it is really knowing kind of our limits. And when you have the training, I think it helps you just to be aware of that. Yep. That's right. That's right. And you, and as you guys are listening, if any questions come up, um, 
you know, please pop them here in the chat. Elaine just asked, can we get this written down somewhere? Yeah, if you're on our email list, Elaine, hopefully you've been getting them all week already. We send show notes after Michelle here, our valiant little note taker. She's got a little smoke coming up because she's writing as fast as she can. <laughs> Her fingers are flying. Um, so yes, we will, we will be um we will be sending these show notes out later. And I think that's so important, you know, like, like I said, I'm not a big fan of like bureaucratic, whatever, but you know, these organizations have to make tough decisions like the CHC that you were part of, but all Nash, we're talking about um, the DH, um, DHANP, right? Yeah. Yep. DHANP. And then the DHT, which is the medical doctor one. Um, they make really tough decisions about, you know, what, is a threshold of hours, what is appropriate, what isn't appropriate, you know, and what kind of training do they get? And I think that's, I think that's really critical because um, some educational programs aren't even very transparent about what their students are learning and what their, you know, threshold are and what their evaluation is. And I think we just assume like, oh, it's all fine, you know, right. but it's not right. everything's created equally. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I think, too, I mean, the thing that I think most people want to learn in homeopathy school is about, tell, you know, teach me about pulsatilla. Let me learn about all the remedies. And that's obviously a big part of it. But then there's also this like consumer safety part of it um, that really, yeah, needs that's that's, you know, really important piece. Not always the, the most fun piece to learn, but it is a really important piece. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be a professional, you need to know kind of when things may be above your above your head or when you, yeah, you need to call Can you help. give me like examples of like consumer safety things that are important for the practitioner to be prepared for or whatever? Maybe that's too. Yeah. Tough. I mean, I, I think, you know, especially nowadays, um, I think a lot of it is for the practitioner to be aware of, you know, cause really anybody could call, call anybody from anywhere, you know? And so just knowing, um, knowing if a case is kind of in your realm, you know, if you have the skills to, um, you know, feel successful in helping a person, knowing when to refer out, um, knowing when, yeah, you may need, um, like this person may need medical attention or just mm -hmm. simply, yeah. I mean, I think, um, because homeopathy is so powerful and it's so amazing. And especially like I'll get referrals from, you know, existing clients. Oh, you got to help my mom. She's got this you know, disease that I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't even know what that is, you know? And so you think, well, can I help the mom? You know, so just kind of figuring out for you, like what your comfort level is, as well as your skill level, um, you know, not only with the remedies, but just like, can you, are you, can you see something going awry and do you know what to do? Right. And I think that's, that has to do with like ethics, right. Being able exactly. to handle, I mean, that's being an ethical, but like you, like we all know, like you're not supposed to get in a relationship with your, the yep. person you're treating. Like there's, there's all these things that you have to learn. Right. And um, yeah, it shows like a benchmark for that person. When I, you know, a lot of people have a hard time finding a homeopath mm -hmm. and um, what kind of things should they be looking for? If you, if you were like going to tell your best friend and she wanted to find a homeopath and you know, your, your client, your, your appointments are full. You can't take any more clients. You're like, okay, let me help you find one. What would you say? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. And it is really hard. To, um, yeah, I would definitely want to refer her out because it'd be too hard to take the case of someone I'm close to. Um, I would say, uh, well, some of these directories, you know, would be a good place to start um, asking it, the main thing I would think there's two things, you know, um, I think all of us kind of have uh, different ways of approaching uh, how we find practitioners, whether it's I just click with this person or um, my, my sister's brother's friend, you know, went to this person and they love them. So, um, but I think the most important thing and a lot of practitioners offer this is just a 15 minute um, phone call to just get to know you know, is there rapport is, you know, homeopathy is a very like personal, it can be very intimate kind of relationship. So do you feel like you could be comfortable, you know, spilling your guts to that person? Um, but there are different directories. Um, I know the National Center for Homeopathy has a directory along with all the other um, uh, uh, places I met, mentioned the CHC and NASH. Um, they all have directories as well. Um, sometimes, you know, in, in the quote, olden days, it was like, who's closest to you, right? 
Um, right. And now it, nowadays it doesn't matter because so many people right. are doing virtual and remote. Yeah. A lot of people still say to me, like, oh, I don't have someone living close to me. I'm like, well, you get that. Like, yeah, we can do it all online yeah. now. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I think um, like as if you were picking, you know, any other sort of health practitioner, if they're, you know, have credentials, um, even looking at their websites, like just kind of what vibe you get from those people. Um, and then also, yeah, if it, the most the way I get most of my clients is through existing clients. So it is a lot of word of mouth. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know if that helps as a consumer. No, that really does help. You know, I will say though, sometimes I will have a really great practitioner that's kind of a grump. <laughs> okay. And so sure. what, I'll, what I'll say to people is like, look, yeah, so and so's a bit grumpy, you know, especially if they're like local to that person or they're like so and so's a bit grumpy, yep. but they're really good. Yeah. They're really, really good. Yeah. You know, something that I look for is um, especially if it's if you think you have a difficult case, I like looking for a full-time homeopath mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who has gotten to that place where they're just doing case after case after right. case. Now, if if you're like generally healthy and your kids are generally healthy and you're just wanting someone for support, you know, maybe you don't need that like full-time person that's really, sure. you know, managing a, a large caseload. I'm trying to think what else I tell people. Um I also like to ask, where did they go to school? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did they go to school? Now, some of the, um, some of the older time homeopaths, like uh, the, you know, the generation even older than us, you know, I think there was a lot fewer options when they were going to school, you know what I mean? And so I'm, I, you know, I'm really interested in that, but, but they come with all that experience and that wisdom, you know, but some of the younger homeopaths have gone to excellent schools that have really trained them so well. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't be afraid, you know, definitely ask where they went to school, but I wouldn't be afraid of working with someone that's younger, Mm -hmm. you know, do you, you know, cause schools kind of play an important role here. Can you explain like the relationship between like CCH and Achina and what is Achina and all that? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, the way that we have the, at least the eligibility requirements for CCH, CHC, is that if you've gone to an Achina school, and Achina is the body that um, accredits the homeopathy schools. So um, they are the ones that look through the curriculum and um, the way that each school runs and um, you know, accredits it or, or not, depending on you know, what's going on with the school. And so part of the, yeah, the eligibility requirement is having um, completed uh, your schooling from an Achina or CHO, which is kind of a, a, the Canadian um, um, equivalent to, to a China sort of, mm-hmm. it's a little bit different, but, um, yeah, those are the requirements. And, um, the other thing I would say, um, is that, um, CEUs and like continued education is also, I think something to look for. I know all of these certifications, um, and registrations that I mentioned all have different uh, requirements for that. And I think that's something that's really important to ask your potential practitioner. Are you, you know, you keep up with the latest stuff and, you know, because it's easy if you're, you know, just doing homeopathy and you kind of, you know, get in your groove and you give Nat and your pulsatilla and carb on Fridays and, you know, and I'm not saying people do that, yeah, but you, you do fall into patterns. You, you yes. do, you do. So like being willing to expand your knowledge. Um, I think you, we, uh, you talked about Trinity Health Hub. It's a really great way to like expand your professional, you know, knowledge and just learn more or different conferences. Um, so I think that's an important if it, to ask, you know, do you have CEUs? You don't know how that would roll yeah, off. That's the continuing tongue. education. But yeah. Do you, yeah. You know, what kind of things are you involved in? Or even also like being involved in the community. Like, do you know what Americans for Homeopathy Choice is? Like, are you in dialed you in? Donate. Yeah, exactly. yes. You donate. Yeah, exactly. You donate to Americans for Homeopathy. Right. They, they right. Yes, hire them. Just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or just are they involved? You know, are they up on the advocacy um, movement do they know you know because sometimes again it can be so it you know can take a lot of time and it's sometimes hard to come up from it for air to be yeah. involved in other things so yeah I think so well um something that's I think important about Achina is they're seeking designation with the um, Department of Education so um that would make them like an, a formally accrediting body just like any school gets accredited and I you know I think they're going to get it sooner than later um, and then, but similarly, the CHC 
so so CHC is the organization that certifies a CCH. So right. it's a little confusing. I know. So Locker. CHC yeah. is like the organization, and then the CCH is what you get after your name if you you know. Right. So the CHC is um, what's it called? Endorsed. It's accredited, accredited. by a yeah yeah it's it's accredited, accredited by a national. By- Mm-hmm. So explain that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's something that um, happened uh, in t- 2017. I was just starting to get involved with the organization, so I came in at the very tail end. But it was a huge um, effort, kind of like the the main strategic uh, initiative for the organization since it started. Um, and so, it, what what happened is it's a third party validation that um, that the organization um, their our our credential the credential. Um, follows kind of best practices of other equivalent healthcare um, um, practitioners. So they look at, you know, how the exam is scored, the statistics of the exam, and we're right in the middle of um, starting, uh, piloting a new exam next month. So, um, but yeah, it's just that third party validation that, um, that just says, yeah, we're, we're on the right track. And yeah. Yeah. It's important, you know, like if you're going to go get your car fixed and you have, Joe Schmo's, you know, certified mechanic, you're like, well, who, right. like what, you know, but it's like, no, 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 Joe Schmo is actually certified under the national mechanics, whatever. Exactly. So you know that this certification actually had to pass certain thresholds to be right. really valid. It's not just like someone's basement. Oh, I'm going to, you know, create this certification thing. I think that's really important, but also like, for, you know, because at Americans for homeopathy choice, I, I had to come to understand a lot of this stuff, Samantha, because the congressperson asks me, how are your professionals prepared, you know, Mm -hmm. educated? How are they prepared? How are they certified? I need to be able to answer these questions. And it has come up before. It's even come up in meetings at the FDA even. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to be really versed on this. Um, And I think that, you know, a lot of natural practitioners are facing a lot of pressure Mm -hmm. today. Um, A lot of skeptics out there, you know, pushing against. And I want our, you know, you want your practitioner to not only be highly qualified, but you want them to be safe. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel very strongly if, if, if you turn around and say, no, 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 I'm a CCH, which is accredited by the national, what national certified, what is it? NCCA NCCA, national. Yeah. yeah, NCCA, the national, I mean, this is the same body that accredits other allied health professionals, like acupuncturists, nurses, massage therapists, like all of those other, like you are up in par at that level, which I think is really good for homeopathy. It right. raises the bar and the, you know, the level of profession, professionalism that we want, you know, we're always complaining, oh, we're always marginalized. People don't understand homeopathy. It's like, well, are we playing with the big boys? Like, are we doing the right, the right steps, you know, which right. I think is really important. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So here's a question someone asked and some questions are coming in here. Let's see. Um, would a homeopath ever need to see a client in person versus in person versus telehealth, like like a video like this? Mm-hmm. Um, it really depends um, on the practitioner. I know some practitioners who definitely want that in person. I want to see you. Um, if somebody's a physician, um, like those the DHT, you know, then they can do a physical examination. So that may be more appropriate uh, for them. Um, myself like personally, a doc- yeah, doctors or osteopaths or even naturopaths, if they want to, you know, be able to hear, hear them breathing or whatever it is. Um, I, myself, I, I don't necessarily have to see someone, um, because of technology, you know, we can, we can be on mm-hmm. video or, um, it's, it's, it is, can, it can be ideal. And I know some people love it and don't want to do the, the telehealth and other people feel, I think for me, I, I feel like I like it a little better, the, the telehealth, just because I feel like I get a different uh, experience of the case for some reason. I don't, I don't pick up on the energy the way I do in person. And so it gets me a little, I don't know, better, a better way to. Yeah, it allows you to kind of analyze instead of like, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a different, a different thing. Although I find it takes me longer to do a case via telehealth than in person. I don't know why, but I'm always like, right. I'm going to have to call you back because I need more yeah. time to like absorb versus when I'm in process. Person, so. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Well, um, let's go ahead and, um, 
Let's go ahead and take a break here in a minute. Brenda is saying great information, very informative for new homeopathic practitioners. Good. I'm so glad we do want you guys to be safe and, um, you know, pr protecting yourself to the extent possible. And I think getting proper certification is really important. Um, and so, uh, Matthew, um, Michalesco, uh, Matt, if uh, he's saying, if, if I donate, does this automatically get me the show notes or just something else? You haven't gotten any show note yet. So, oh, Beth, Beth, you just need to sign up to our email list, which is at homeopathychoice.org. Just become a free member. Um, Chandler, maybe you can post the link to that um, to become a free member. And um, anyhow, if you could, if you just sign up, it's free. Anyone can get the show notes regardless of if you've donated or not. So, um, so anyways, yeah, that's how you can get the show notes, um, that we're taking right here and it'll have like all the links and everything. And, um, yeah, so we'll come back with Samantha in just a little bit. Thank you so much, Samantha. Go ahead and turn off your camera and I'm going to bring, um, Jennifer in just a moment. Don't turn on your camera quite yet, Jennifer, but, um, I want to share my screen and kind of walk you guys through some of the things that have been happening here at homeopathy choice. Um, so day four guys, um, every day during pledge drive week, we love to give a prize, like a, a little, you know, incentive for anyone who's donating. If you donate, like, like Beth, you were saying she donates $10 a month. So you're entered automatically in the raffle. And thank you so much, Beth, for doing that. We love you. And we so appreciate that. And we appreciate all of you guys who, um, have been donating to Americans for homeopathy choice. It means so much. So you get entered. Um, today we're giving you guys just kind of some fun, um, kind of some fun swag, just about homeopathy in general. We're giving you guys, um, some remedies. We're giving you a little mommyopath tote, um, a nice little candle for relaxing and a kit, like a, not a kit, but a, a remedy case, um, that has all these little glass vials in there. And what's so cool about it is if you have like a regular size bottle, you can dump some of the remedies into these little vials. And then you have like an extra kit to send, you know, to your husband at work or whatever. Um, and then you got a t-shirt homeopathy for life. You guys have, um, the family homeopathy journal that I developed kind of as a side thing, separate from Americans for homeopathy choice. And so we've donated those things. So one of you guys are going to win that. And, um, our goal at this point, we've, we've met our goal. We want to go above it. If we can get to 45,000, um, by the end of this week, that would be so amazing. And thank you so much. Truly. Thank you so much for donating. Another way you can support us guys is by joining the homeopathy action team. We're going to have an informational webinar on October 5th, and you can register for that free webinar. It's at homeopathychoice.org forward slash hat. And when you register on it, you'll be included in the webinar. We're going to just ask for answer basic questions about what is the hat team guys, we're going to put you through a beautiful and seamless training to talk to your representatives. People say to me all the time, I don't know how to schmooze my representatives. Well, we don't want you to, to do that. We want you guys to be authentic. We want you to be yourselves and we want you to talk about homeopathy from the heart, but we do want you to speak about it in a politically appropriate way. And that's what we coach you through in the homeopathy action team. You're going to be part of a district team. If you can get more members in your district, you'll have a state captain. It's really a fantastic program. We really encourage you, encourage you guys to join the webinar and be part of this effort um, and vote with your, with your mouth and vote with your time. So talk to people about homeopathy, donate money. That's a way to vote. And also joining this team, um, you're voting with your time. So also just so you guys know, we have an awesome swag over at the Homeopathy Choice website, homeopathychoice.org. If you enter the coupon pledge 2021, um, it expires on the 30th of this month, but you guys can get 10% off any of our items there. So that's another great way to do it. And um, yeah. So we will announce at the end of today's show, the person who won yesterday's um, raffle, um, day three raffle. So, um, okay, without further ado, let's bring Jennifer on. Um, I've seen Jennifer quite a bit. She's been around for a while. She's been a supporter of us. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. How are you? Hello, hello. Great. So I'm excited to be here. Good. Thank you so much for being here. You've been um, a, a member of the Bear Pack for a while. So tell us what the Bear Pack is, because that might be a new term for some people. Well, it's as someone who agrees to be a sustaining member for Americans for Homeopathy Choice. So every month, I, I mean, I guess you could do it every, a big one every year, but I do it every month and I don't even, I get my little thing like, oh, great, it went out. But it just, it goes out every month to support, to support our efforts. And I really like the name. I like being a mama bear, being in the mama bear pack. <laughs> I 
I love it. Yes, that's right. And we get, you know, it's, we get, um, I mean, you know, we, sometimes it's like, Hey, you're in the bear pack and you, you know, you get a little bit of extra information, which is kind of fun. We do. So we do. Of, we have, yeah. we occasionally have special meetings where we kind of let you guys in on the inside workings, which is yeah. really nice. Yeah. So if you yeah, donate $25 fun. or more a month and Chandler, he'll pop in that link there to join the bear pack. Um, you're a mama bear and you know, homeopathy is like our bear. baby because it takes care of our babies. And so we want to protect it. Like right. mama bear is protect. Yeah, that's right. So why right. is homeopathy so important to you? Like, tell us about that. Well, I want to start, tell you a quote from Constantine Herring. And I don't know if people know he was an early pioneer in homeopathy in the United States. And I yeah. kind of have a little homeopathy crush on him, but he said I too. Uh, when he started, do you? No way. Yes, I oh totally do. He's super awesome. And he was kind of cute too. So yes, totally. He was. He was I know. Totally. I love so he beard. said my, he said me too. And he, he spread it around. I mean, he didn't try to hold the information. He was, he was fabulous, but he said, my enthusiasm grew. I became a fanatic. I went about the country, visited inns where I got up on tables and benches to harangue whoever might be present to listen to my enthusiastic speeches on homeopathy. I love that quote. That's from Constantine Harry. That is so fabulous. Totally. I love it. So now we're on the tables, you know, but they're virtual. So, right. So I came to homeopathy with a sunburn. This is how I got here. Oh. You know, it's one of those. Yeah. So I have to confess that, you know, I hadn't worn a bikini for many, many years. And for some crazy reason, I got one for vacation. And You're feeling confident. <laughs> I was feeling confident. And I was going to be in a different place where nobody knew me. And I got, you know, a terrible sunburn, especially on my stomach. Cause you know, it hadn't seen the light of day for a while. Okay. So I was doing, alo- you know, aloe vera gel and it was not doing the trick. And I went to our health food store and I told the lady, I was like, I have a sunburn. Can you please help me? She said, I know exactly what you need. And she gave me, well, I bought it, but I mean, she brought me this little tube and it said, well, Ada burn care cream. I was like, great. I'll try it. I went on, I put it on 15 minutes later, I had like an 80% reduction in pain. I was like, what is this stuff? And I look at it, and I was like, homeopathy. I'd never heard of, I mean, I was a health food nut, you know, all of these things. I'd never heard of homeopathy. And it took my sunburn pain away in 15 minutes. And I was like, I've got to know more. All right. And yep. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I came to homeopathy. That's and then awesome. I started, I it. yeah, I, I started researching it and I got really mad. I'm like, how have I lived this long in my life and never heard about this? Where have you been all my life? Who's been keeping you from me? And, you know, it's been, yeah, I haven't, been I've never heard a story about how a bikini got someone into homeopathy. That's great. <laughs> I love it. That's you know, not, from, I like- not from Constantine Herring. It wasn't his, yeah, it wasn't, no, he didn't get in with the bikini. Okay. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. I love it that you like a lot of people, um, like the way you described Constantine Herring as you're being here. I'm like, I mean, I'm telling you, I really like him. He's super oh, cool. He really, oh, yes. me too. He, me yeah, too. he's got a really great story. So, um, yeah. yeah. So then after that, it's just been, you know, so do you have family? Do you use it with your family, your friends, your pets or anything like that? All of the above and my plants. You can use it with plants yeah. too. That's um, right. What was interesting, so I always have the burn care with me because I live in Texas and we get burned frequently by fire ants. And it's yes. just, it's amazing for fire ants. And so, you know, I was in a, in a play group with my kids and we get there and there's a little girl, her mother's holding her and she is screaming and the mom's got her foot and it's just got, you know, fi- you know how fire ants do, they just attack and go right. for it. They're awful. You know, yep. and she's just, and I said, Hey, I've, I've got this. You want to try it? She's like, sure. So she tries it. And within five minutes, little girl start, you know, she's fine. Her, her bites are better. She gets down, she goes off in place. So I got a reputation in our play group. If anybody, if the fire ants got on anybody, they all ran to me. Hey, can I have your little white stuff? And so, so do you use the same of, cream? Is that the cream that you use or which remedy do you use for those fire? Ants? Well, I use the, I still, um, I still get it from them. I use the gel now. Cause I like it instead of the cream. It's mm-hmm. not over the counter anymore. You actually, I call the pharmacy, their pharmacy in New York and I order it every year at the beginning of the summer season, just because we use it for everything. No mosquito bites, everything, you know, and then even like, you know, I'm, I cook a lot and I burn myself, you know, the cooking burns. It's amazing. 
Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So I'm totally going to, I'm Googling it right now. Cause I want to see yeah. it's, it's it. How do you spell it? Well, Waleda. you know, well, W E L E D a, that company will yeah. you, they have a lot of, um, like personal care, natural products, but I think I'm not sure that they got yeah, their and bites cooling gel. Here it is. I'm going to have that's, Chandler. That's it. Post it, Chandler. Yeah. We, we know all these little ladies. Like, I would like to order that right now. <laughs> I know Waleda is going to be like, why did we suddenly get a hundred orders of this cream? <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Is there anything else you wanted to share? You know, because I know you've dedicated time as well to homeopathy choice. You've pro- participated in <clears throat> homeopathy on the Hill. I have. One of the things I want to share is that I have a, a background in nonprofits. I used to work for a child advocacy organization. And we spent so much of our time trying to raise funds. You know, it, we spent more time trying to raise funds and keep our doors open than we did being child advocates. And that's one of the main reasons I became a sustaining member because I need expertise in Washington, D.C. that I don't have. And I need somebody to get on the, you know, get on the phone, get on the computer and say, OK, here's the petition. Get it out. And that is so invaluable to me. And so I don't want you guys to have to be scraping up every month to be able to do this. So that's one of the reasons that I sustain as a member of of this group. It's so important. Free up your time to get out there and and save our save our remedies. Well, and I have to say that's one of the reasons I have volunteered for um, going on four years soon here. Because I want to just get this done. I want to win. I want to get to the other side. But like it or not, there are there, being sustainable is really important, especially when, you, you know, you. I thought this was going to be like a one or two year thing, maybe three years. Like I never, ever thought like <laughs> we'd still be, you know, going strong here. But, you know, the other thing, too, is that mm-hmm. we're being successful. That letter to sending it to FDA was a really big deal. And that was because of everybody's help here. So we have to, we have to keep moving forward. And I'm, I'm just like, we've got to do this smart. We've got to do this smart. Yeah. So I yeah. really appreciate it. I have to tell you, I had happy tears when I saw the result of that and what had happened. My daughter's like, what's wrong, mom? And, and so she's 11 and she's very informed with, with all these things that's going on with homeopathy. And I told her what happened and she was jumping up and down. She was so excited and the homeopathy on the hill was a big day for her so you know to she wanted to hear everything that was going on it was very interesting it was a great lesson in government for us it is know, it really is homeopathy it, yeah it this, really is yeah this really is like a family organization where the entire family gets involved and i think that's awesome yep yeah. that's great well thank you so much jennifer i want yes. to get back to my interview samantha is there anything great. else you wanted to say um thanks thank you for everybody in americans for homeopathy choice you know, I love homeopathy. It is the medicine for the people. And let's keep it that way. I love it. Okay. I love it. That's right. Okay. That's very good. Thank yep. you so much for being okay. here. We really appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Okay, Samantha, let's get back to our interview with you. Um, that was fun. I love hearing from um, from people like Jennifer and hearing their awesome perspective. And, you know, we are so lucky because it's it's people like that, that, you know, fuels our energy and our organization. So we're so thankful for her. Yeah, definitely. And what a great story from a sunburn to, you know, like that doesn't, yeah, that was great. That's great. From bikini to homeopathy. That's right. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And you guys and your crush on Constantine. Oh, I know. I really do. I was actually, I totally (laughs) just thought of the shirt. I'm like, a picture of his face. Um, Constantine was a smarty and a hottie. I love it. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Um, and then if anyone like recognizes it and walks up to him, like we can be friends. (laughs) Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So, um, yeah, let's get back to kind of our discussion here about, um, you know, finding a homeopath. Again, I think it's so important for, for budding homeopaths. You know, you know, another thing about Achina and about CCH that I think is really important, you know, when homeopathy was, and can you corroborate this actually, cause I'm not a thousand percent sure, but when homeopathy was, you know, getting stronger, um, the, the schools were fewer, small, you know, and they didn't have a lot of resources. So they had to do clinical case taking via like recorded videos. Like that was something that they just had to do to make it work, which is perfectly fine. But then um, now we we're in a different place where there's a lot more interest in the, and, a, and a lot more people know about, it. I think social media, the internet's helped a lot. So um, one of the requirements is that actually you're taking 
cases with a live real person. I like that as a consumer, I like the idea of working with a homeopath that has trained not with video recordings, but with real people. Can you tell a little bit about that? Because I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think um, just, you know, when I back when I was a student, that was one of my, you know, favorite times was getting to sit in on clinical, because you not only get to take the case, but then you get to also watch, you know, a more experienced homeopath in action and just listen to the questions they're asking, or, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that, or I would, I did think of that, yay, I feel like I'm on the right track. So there is a Mm -hmm. lot more interactivity when you can actually, you know, participate in a live, I mean, I think, I think there can be um, teaching moments in like a video, like if there's, you know, you're trying to learn basics, but yeah, there's nothing like hands-on getting to do it, um, you know, live and and, and, and with people or even just observing people live. I mean, I think, or video, however, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, like real real people, I mean, not like a real yeah. And, yeah. and is that a requirement for CCH is that you actually had that kind of clinical work or not? I well, I mean, so it kind of feeds in. So Achina, um, whatever the requirements are for the Achina schools is how. Um, and so, okay. So it's kind of like Achina requires it. Yeah. Therefore the school does live clinical. Therefore their graduates are allowed to take the CCH exam. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't, I don't know a hundred percent if it's, if they have to do live, but there is some sort of clinical component. Requirements. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a certain number of hours. It can't just exactly. be five, you know, that kind right. of, a yeah, definitely a certain amount of hours. And you know, it, and it's just like the tip of the iceberg really like when, what, when you get out, you're like, it's just, you know, I, I don't yeah. know. It, it's, you, it, 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 it feels like a lot of training, but then when you actually start doing it, you're like, oh my gosh, Wow. Yeah. We do this for like millions of more years to feel like. I know know. it. I know. But, but I'm telling you a lot of these students that are graduating now, we actually had the Academy of Homeopathy Education um, sponsor this and they, they were featured on Tuesday. I think that was the day that they were, they selected and um, they do that. And I've even talked to like, like the schools, like they want to support each other. And I know that they've even offer like, okay, we have this whole program to do clinicals. If your school wants to join our programs, you know, like maybe your school doesn't have that infrastructure. You can use ours and we can come together because the goal is just to make homeopathy or homeopaths really highly trained. And I think that's, I loved it when, when they told me that I was like, that's really cool because they just want it to be good and it to grow. And I think that's, I think that's really good. Yeah. So, um, Let's talk about like difficult cases and why work with a professional homeopath. Let's go there. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The difficult cases piece. I mean, I feel like, uh, it's just a natural progression as, as, as I'm going on in my practice, you know, what was difficult when I was starting is, is now easy and, but it just keeps increasing, you know, um, and, and that it's just very natural, every normal, I guess I'm trying to normalize that there are just hard cases. And when, when I get a hard case, um, there's a few things I'll do. Um, I will, well, at the beginning, I try to really see, make sure that it's a good fit for me. If someone is coming in with, you know, things that I just feel like are over my head, I, I, from the start, I try not to like sign on and say, yeah, let's do this. You know, I really want to make sure they're a good fit uh, for me as well as for them. Um, Mm -hmm. But if I, but sometimes it will happen. I was thinking about this when I was listening to um, Sue talk yesterday you know, someone will come up and be like, oh, I have these hot flashes. And I think, oh, hot flashes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I got remedies for that. Like I've treated that or helped with that. And um, then as the case goes on, it's like, oh, I've hot, I've got hot flashes and, you know, I'm missing an organ or like things that you're like, oh, okay, wow, that's, that is reached a little bit more difficult. Um, so yeah. I have a, I have a supervisor, a mentor homeopath that I I uh, will go to. Um, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, that that's a good question me. to ask your homie. It is. Like, it, is. One. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is. And I have a part in my like consultation about that, you know, I will, um, re- giving me permission to talk to other colleagues about a case if I need help. Um, and so, yeah, so that is a good question to ask. Um, and I think just the act of, um, putting a case. So like, if I call my mentor, she needs me to like, you know, kind of give her the, the, the summary of what's going on. And even just the act of that can help me to go, Oh yeah, I forgot 
you know, this started when she yeah, was Yeah, just having or, to talk it out with someone. It actually, exactly. I think it actually triggers a different part of your brain when yeah, you do that. You know? I think so. Like I'll write a, a presentation or a speech and then I'll say it to my husband and boom, I'm like, Ooh, oh my gosh, this is yep. getting way better. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I think too, like, oh, I could help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I know. And I think too, like the mentor isn't there saying, oh, go, go, you know, give next Vomica. The mentor just says, right. well, you know, I think you should ask more about this incident, or I think you should consider this family of remedies. And it's just really helpful to just, I don't know, have that guidance and to know that I'm, I'm not in this alone. I think, um, you know, it can be very lonely being a homeopath sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're out there, you know, kind of working with clients, but then like, you have no one to go hang out at the water cooler with and talk about, you know strange, rare, peculiar, you know, uh, symptoms. So, um, having that support also study groups. So, um, if you are, you know, involved in a study group that can also help, you know, bring a difficult case to a study group just to get, you know, again, feedback and, and, and different people have different experiences. So some people, you know, have studied more in certain conditions or certain remedies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll also sometimes, um, go to other practitioners, um, other modalities, if I'm really stuck on a case, um, just to, just to get a different perspective of how to maybe look at something. Um, and then sometimes, um, I'll ask the person to maybe take a break, like stop your remedy for a couple of weeks or some, or, or yeah. a time frame So we can just assess, like sometimes there's lots of variables. Of yeah. Sometimes, you know, oh, I did this and then I did that. And then, and so it's sometimes hard to gauge. So sometimes taking some of the variables out of the equation can help me, help me and also help, help the case to clear a little bit. I like that. I think that's really good. Um, Someone here is asking a question and I'm going to give my thoughts and I want you to tell me what you think too. Um, How do you determine if it's time to change homeopaths? My response would be pick wisely to begin with. I mean, I truly like the, ideally you won't have to change homeopaths. And I really think that step one is to pick wisely to begin with guys. I have never worked with a homeopath that hasn't had that foundational classical training. I think that's really critical. And I'm talking like proper schooling, proper certification. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of choice in homeopathy, different homeopaths. They have their own journey and they do different kinds of homeopathy. And I think that's perfectly fine for the consumer to make the decision for themselves, what works, what doesn't work. I really feel strongly start by working with someone who's gone to proper schooling, you know, and a China accredited school is what I, what I like to look for. And then getting that proper certification, which we talked to at the beginning, but then what do you say? How do you know when it's time to switch or to take? Cause sometimes I have hit, I have hit walls and I have, sometimes I've stayed with a homeopath for too long and I was really not doing well, mm-hmm. you know? So that's kind of a hard thing to do. Yeah, it can be, it can be, but I think, you know, ultimately um, it's, it is a lot about, you know, having, having communication about expectations, you know, and um also having like treatment goals, like together, like if you go in again, these are all things in hindsight, you know, if you could establish with somebody, but just saying, these are my treatment goals. And then if you can, if you see, well, after three months, you know, we're not moving in that direction, you know, sometimes the body does have its own agenda on what it needs to be, um, you know, taken care of first. So sometimes there's that issue, but I would say, um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's tough. Because- I, think, I think there's two things you need to do. I think one, you need to talk to your homeopath before you switch. I yeah. really think that they deserve to know, because I know that's so awkward and maybe if they don't react well, then like, well, maybe that's a sign that this isn't going to work out, yeah. you know, but, but yeah. a good homeopath is going to really appreciate that. Cause they may not have even realized how frustrated you were. And maybe they have a mentor that's like, okay, you know what? Maybe I've let, I didn't realize I'm going to go talk to my mentor now. You know what I mean? So I think let them know before you yep. just stop showing up, yeah. you know? Yeah. I and, think that's a good idea. and then I, I like to give it at least three consultations slash follow-ups before. And you're not, I'm not looking for complete like resolution, I'm looking for progress, you know, improvement. And so, um, so talk to them. And if you're really getting nowhere now, I, I made, that's how I learned is I worked with someone once for the better part of a year. And I was really doing a lot worse and worse with, um, you know, 
anyways. And that, that happens. So, but you have to be honest with yourself. Like if it's working, stick with it. If it's not working, don't just keep hoping that the next thing will work. Like you need to address it. And you need to kind of give yourself a timeline. Even before I got homeopathy, Samantha, I was doing a lot of stuff for my chronic illnesses. And so I, I gave like the acupuncturist, the herbalist, the chiropractor, you know, I gave them all, okay, this is how much time I'm going to give them. And, um, and sometimes I might stretch that out a little bit more because I'm hopeful or whatever, but you really do need to kind of be disciplined and say, this is, or isn't working. So I'm not sure. And sometimes even speaking up is part of maybe your own healing process, right. To realize, huh, this isn't feeling like a fit and, and, you know, and and having that conversation, like you said, even though it could be awkward, but it could also be really healing that, you know, to have that conversation. Yeah, that's right. I think so too. So, um, why work with a homeopath? Like, why is that so important to work with a professional homeopath? Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot. I mean, when I went to homeopathy school, I, I didn't, well, when I first started doing homeopathy as a consumer, I, I didn't even know what it was, to be honest. I don't even know how I knew the word. It just like, I just was like, I need a homeopath. And my friend knew one and then the, she had a school and then it just kind of all like, you know, fell into place. But, um, I think, I think it's important. I was thinking of my, my son the other day came home and he's like, mom, you need to do, get, get a different job. And I was like, Oh really? And he's like, yeah, okay. it, 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 when I tell people what you do, it kind of sounds like you're a drug dealer. And I was like, Oh, okay. He goes, we give them like these natural little white things and baggies. And then like, sometimes there's coat, you know, it was just so funny. And I thought, okay, well just tell people I'm an accountant then like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like this. Just say you're an, I'm a natural, I'm a natural practitioner. Yeah. Person. Cause I was like, well, what do you even say I do? And so it was just a funny thing because um, yeah, it is, it's kind of own, own world, you know, but I think working with a professional, I think the training is really helpful. And, and one thing that I was the training, the experience, they have a network of other practitioners uh, and or other like modality, you know, other um, people that they may work with. And then the most important thing, and this is what I'll see a lot of times when I work with home prescribers is the potency. Finding a potency um, can be really difficult uh, when even, even for, you know, even amongst, amongst experienced homeopaths, we may all have a different uh, training on potency or theory or belief about potency and that's what I see the most when people come to me who've been using homeopathy for a long time and they're very successful, but they'll get to a point where it's like, but I, I know the remedy, but I didn't know, you know, how, what potency to use. And so that can be a really helpful, just even that in itself can be a, a helpful thing to go to a professional. Um, but it, you know, it is like, you wouldn't really go to somebody well, and yeah. Well, I was going to ask you something about that. Like, remember how earlier you were saying, if I had a friend, I wouldn't work with her. Mm-hmm. Why, like, even you feel like your own people in your life that you might be close with should see a, a professional, like, right. why, why is that? Um, well, I would definitely want them to be in good hands, you know, in someone that knows what they're doing. Uh, because I think if you don't know what you're doing in homeopathy, even though it is a natural and, you know, safe feeling modality, it, if you don't know what you're doing, it, it can, it can cause issues. And so, um, or it can do nothing. And then that's almost like worse sometimes because then people go, Oh, well, this doesn't work. You it know? doesn't work. Yeah. So well, I think if you go to a professional, they can give you, you know, a better experience. And to be unbiased, you ha- you kind of have your own opinions about your friend or whatever. And it's good exactly. to kind of someone that clean slate. So I have yeah. a friend, I have a really good story. My friend, um, she had a child that had kind of a chronic ongoing situation. Um, it involved a lot of like anger and just emotional stuff. And, um, she's really actually quite smart. She, I, I tell her all the time, like, you need to go to homeopathy school and Mm -hmm. then we will hire you forever. But she, she's really clever. She's really smart. And she actually landed on a remedy for her son and she gave it to him and it helped. Right. And, um, so she went to work with a classical homeopath. This is actually the one that I tell people like he's grumpy, but it's not you. It's just this person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she went to go see him. And sure enough, when she told him that she'd given him this, and it was kind of a hardcore remedy, she'd given it to him. He was just like, Arr. and mm-hmm. she was like, ah, oh, I'm sorry. And he was like, why would you give your kid this remedy? And she was like, well, hang on a second. She went through her notes and he was like, sounds like that remedy. So mm-hmm. she actually got it right. She actually yeah. got it right. 
But actually what happened was what she realized is that remedy kind of opened something up for her son. Mm -hmm. And he says, typically this remedy needs a follow-up with a different remedy. Mm -hmm. And she did not do that. She nailed the first remedy. She got that right. But she actually, and then, you know, she was talking to him. It'd been like at least a year and a half later. And so she says, Paola, I promise you, I missed a window there of opportunity Mm -hmm. where that remedy kind of opened things up for him and he needed to go into now the next layer. And now she's working with this homeopath and they are seeing progress, but it would have been easier. Like, why wouldn't you just want to go get to the easier place? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and that case management is kind of what I've begun to value. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a dabbler and I can probably get that first remedy, sure. maybe not for all, you know, a lot of chronic stuff, but like, especially for acute stuff or whatever, I can, I can get it, yep. but it's not about finding the right remedy. It's about like the whole arc yep. of the experience. And that's what a homeopath is going to manage for you. Right. And think through, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, no, I definitely agree because there are things, well, a, a couple of things like, yeah, when we're too close, like even mm-hmm. with my kids, like I just, I, you know, I, I, I outsource it because I'm like, I I can do like the the, the ankle sprains and the different things that are just like, you know, easy and right in front of me, but the bigger stuff, it's just, it's just too hard to see. And, um, and yeah, but, but then, yeah, there are just different things you learn, you know, about uh, the way remedies interact with each other, how how quickly a remedy may, um, you know, stop acting versus, yeah. Well, it's just like, you know, have you ever had like, you know, people listening, have you ever had a problem? that you just can't figure out. And then your friend gives you advice and you're like, oh my gosh, that is so true. Or have you ever had a friend with a problem and you've been like, it's so clear to me what this person needs to do. They need to dump that boyfriend or whatever it is, right? Yeah. It's, I find that it's the same with homeopathy, but it's a little bit more subtle. You don't realize that you need help because you think you got it. Mm -hmm. When actually there, you know, and maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. And, and I think just to to me, like, I believe in self-reliance. We live on this farm and everything, you know, where we're producing, we're working on producing our own food and everything. I believe in like, we own tons of remedies. I can handle stuff, but I feel like adding a homeopath to your team for your family grows your ability to be self-reliant. You have someone to turn to, they know your family, they know you, um, they've already kind of established, you know, that initial appointment we took usually an initial appointment with the homeopath costs a little bit more. So we spent like a year and a half slowly one by one working our family into our family homeopath. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And I think it's wonderful. Right. Well, and I think too, it's like the difference between using homeopathy, uh, kind of as a band aid. like, you know, we talked about like the sunburn thing, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And that's mm-hmm. great to have it as, you know, oh, I have a headache or different things. But when you work with a professional, they can get to the underlying root and cause with the mm-hmm. remedies that they're going to recommend so that you're not going to need those Band-Aid remedies as much and yeah. really get to kind of improve overall health. Yeah. So when you go guys looking for a homeopath, look for that, those acronyms that we talked about, the CCH, the DHANP, the D, what was it? Um, the medical doctor and DHT, mm-hmm. um, NASH, CCH. Um, of course, there's going to be an exception here and there, especially right. the older home paths. They may not have it. So I'm not saying this is like the only way to go, but I, I think it's a really safe way to go. Look for, ask for about the schools they've gone to, ask about the number of hours they've done, um, ask if they have a mentor, right? What else would we say, Samantha? Um, you know, talk I think too, to them. yeah, if they have any sort of specialty that you're looking for, like some people just don't work, you know, children can be their own, own like, you know, mm-hmm. so if they don't specialize in children, then you may want to find someone who specializes in children or women's health or whatever condition you have to really, um, yeah, making sure you get your needs met. Um, cause I'm sure there's somebody out there for everybody, you know? Right. That's right. And Beth is asking, is there specialized training in pediatric care and homeopathy? Um, I, 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 I don't know if there is like a special designation, uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. right. Yeah. But I know yeah, there but, are but different things that person covered. might just have a flair for mm-hmm. it. Like I was in the exactly. UK and I met a woman that specializes in ADHD for kids. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, she, but just because she took an interest in it and that's the kind of client she yeah. takes and that's just her experience, you know? Right. Right. So I think, and then I, my recommendation is just because the homeopath is, I mean, I'm sorry, Samantha, you're probably one of the most normal homeopaths I've ever met. Homeopaths can be a little bit odd and a little bit kooky, a little bit, you know, just like, I, I don't worry so much about if my personality gels too much. I'm more concerned. Priority is um, their qualifications and their experience. And then we'll work it out. We'll get used to each other and it'll be fine. You know what I mean? Sure. Even, even my homeopath now, sometimes I'm like, mm, awkward. I don't get it, but okay. <laughs> He's made me feel so much better. So it's perfect. Right. Fine. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Well, I think too, like availability and your needs, like are yes. you needs oh, yeah. somebody that is available on the weekends or 2 a.m. You know, some people are, some people can be that flexible and other people right. they aren't. Yeah. Yeah. For I'm at, I'm at the point now, Samantha, where I'm more stable and I, and my homeopath is very busy and I don't need urgent, urgent, urgent care. And I know enough about acute stuff that I'm mm-hmm. not like, but if that's a big deal to you, like, do yeah. they have an assistant? Is yeah. the assistant available? And right. my homeopath actually has an assistant. So if, if he's out mm-hmm. of town, she can, ha- and she like knows stuff so she can yeah. help me or whatever, or mm-hmm. reach out or whatever. But then there's always homeopathy help now too. If you're right. like, cause when I got, when I got sick with a, a certain illness mm-hmm. that's going around, um, I, uh, my home path is actually on vacation on some Island with like no internet. And, and they were like, just go to homeopathy help now. And I was like, okay. And right. so that's really nice too. Yeah. So. That's great. That's great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Samantha. Yes, We've gone thank a little you. Bit older, but really appreciate it. Go ahead. And anything else you want to say or no, just keep on doing okay. the great work you guys are doing. Thank you so much. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. And um, thank you. And I'm going to just finish up here, guys. Um, Stay here till the end because I'm going to be announcing the winner of yesterday's um, raffle gift. So um, this is the gift that we're raffling off tomorrow. So definitely join us tomorrow. And um, and uh, do sign up to our homeopathy action team webinar by going to homeopathychoice.org. Go ahead and pop that into the chat, um, into the post Chandler, homeopathychoice.org forward slash hat hyphen webinar. Um, this is just a free webinar. We're going to explain to you what it means to be on the homeopathy action team. There is a little bit of time up front for you guys to get your training. And these are like life skills. You guys, this isn't just, you know, one, this isn't going to be skills that you're going to learn just to advocate for homeopathy. This is an important time in our country where we need to speak up about our concerns to our representatives. And this is going to give you really broad skills. But once that training is done, it takes guys like two, three, depending on how efficient you are with your time, um, hours a month, two or three, four hours a month for you to connect with your staffer and just maintain that relationship. It's all about friendship and relationship building with your offices. Um, so please sign up to that. That's going to be on October 5th. And then the item shop of the day, we're giving 10% off the entire shop right now. We're highlighting this awesome little water bottle here, um, metal, not plastic. Um, thank you so much for all of you who have donated. We're trying to get now at this point to 45 guys. I'm always scared to set the, the numbers for pledge rights. I'm like, Oh, what if we don't make it? Oh my gosh. And you know, so I, I we always need a little bit more, but I just, I'm like, it's okay. I'm just, we're going to do this much. So please do donate. And, um, our next goal then is 45,000. Um, so thank you so much. And what we do, if you join the bear pack guys, uh, the bear pack is where you don't donate $25 or more a month. And if you join the bear pack, we're taking that $25 donation. We're multiplying it by 12. So it's, you know, we actually didn't get that money in, but we're counting people who've joined the bear pack because, you know, they'll be donating 25 a month. So that means a lot. Okay. Let's announce the raffle prize winner from yesterday. This is yesterday's raffle prize. And that person is Anna Wood. Anna, yay. I'm so happy that you won this. I hope that you love the chocolate and the little case and the lavender candle and the neck massager and the book and the t-shirt and all those remedies. So um, definitely send an email to Michelle actually at bearpack at homeopathychoice.org to claim your prize bundle. And thank you so much for donating. It means a lot. We love and appreciate you and all of you guys who are donating to Americans for homeopathy choice. Um, we really do love you. We really do appreciate all of your sacrifice of your time and of, um, your, your dollars. So thank you so much for making this, um, possible. And we are here to maintain our access to homeopathy to the full range of homeopathic medicines. So thank you so much Chandler. Thanks for being here. He's getting married next week. Everyone say, Happy marriage, Chandler. (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you later. We'll see you tomorrow for our last speaker. Who is, who is it? 
It is, oh yeah, it's Gabrielle Traub. We're going to be talking about advocacy, which is kind of a great way to close um, this wonderful week. Our theme has been in a gentle way, you can shake the world from a wonderful advocate, Gandhi. 